Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I'm at Rancho California Golf Course, or the Golf Club of Rancho California with Eric Meitrick. Hey Eric. Good morning. How's it going? Thanks for coming out. Eric and I were talking, uh, we talk all the time, but we were talking the other day about something. You made it in a very simple way that I really liked, Eric, where you were saying, like, what are you looking for? What, what's, what are you trying to accomplish? So when you're working with a student, what are you really looking for? Like, what's the end goal of what you're trying to develop with them? Um, risk conditions at impact. So okay. I'll look at a student down the line and then face on and see what the risk conditions at impact look like to see if we're actually compressing the ball mm -hmm. or if we're scooping it. Can you show me kind of like in a slow motion way? So if we're, if from the face on, if yeah. we're getting the wrist and I'm looking for a flattish left wrist, one that might be heading towards this, certainly not this real dramatic bow in the wrist. Right but something that's gonna support the club through impact with the flat left wrist that we're gonna be exiting mm -hmm. something like this, where this hand will look like this. If I see a wrist condition that's coming down, and even if it looks decent at impact, but then we're getting to here. Yeah, like a lot of times you'll see like some like okay players, they'll look okay at impact and they'll be like, oh, I got it. But immediately after it's right to this, Right. you know? Yeah, okay. so we look at we look at the plane, do we see where, where, where on, where the plane is with their left arm and their club and if it's getting somewhere too shallow where it's back here and then they have to throw that head to catch up and get it down their target line or if they're coming over this way it'll come down and it'll throw that wrist so we look at two angles to see if it's getting there if it's not why isn't it and then we start chipping away in order how we're going to get it on plane so and get almost that always when you see see somebody that has got like a flip at the bottom or it's okay, but like uh, I think I guess rate of flip is something that some people say. Sure, it's going to that it's too big of a rate of flip. It's almost always a plane issue. You think? Uh, it, it's it a lot of times start with a plane issue because if it's not on plane, the, the wrists get compensated to get the club head and the face going down the target line to hit some kind of decent shot. Okay. So so if I'm here, and then I'm here, and the ball say where where this tee is and I keep going down and I kept like good wrist, I just whiff it. Or you just go left, you go left to left. Or, yeah, right. Yeah. So you, you do something to get, it, to get it to the ball. Right. Okay. So we look at the plane and then we look at how, how is the club head and your arms synced up to your body rotation. Okay. And if it's not, then these, these don't have the, the wrist conditions don't have the integrity into and through impact that we need to compress it uh -huh. they get compromised and throw if they're not if it's not synced up properly so this is what we're going to talk about today because i think it's a super fundamentally important thing that uh we've talked about before but there haven't been that many awesome solutions about how to get there and eric has some really interesting ideas i think the first thing we're going to do eric is we're going to put you on the hack motion device because that is an amazing device that shows what's happening with the wrist and we'll just kind of go over some of the graphs and see what's happening go okay eric so we're going to do it kind of reverse usually you're checking other people out now we're going to check you out okay. about uh the way you do things so when it comes to like what your wrists do in the downswing, not even like what you want to see students do, but like kind of what you know that you do in your pattern. I should say, I never said, Eric is a pro golfer. He's been playing pro golf for years and has won, I think almost 70 times as a professional. Yeah, uh, quite that many, a little over 50. A little over 50 times yeah. as a professional, won the Long Beach Open twice, played in the US Open. So he's got great credentials as a player. So what do you usually feel that you do with your wrists through the swing? Um, you know, over the, over the years, I've, I wish I had, I wish I had the risk conditions that I teach. Okay. My impact, I was, I used to play with four degree upright, mm -hmm. right? And I'm too flat now, two degrees flat. Okay. So with four degrees upright, and I still do, my swing is under the plane and shut and I, ri I hinge my wrist late and it gets up here and it comes down. But I used to come down, I used to throw, so being four upright at impact, I'm, I'm like this, I'm throwing my head through. So my wrist conditions were not very good okay, through gotcha. a lot of my playing career. Mm -hmm. And probably the last 15 years, I've, I've understood them more and I've worked on them more, but they're still not quite what they need to be, mm -hmm. probably to play at a real high level okay. and to get that compression. But what I feel 
coming down is is I do feel flexion in that wrist and when it's coming down the plane and I'm leading with my left side and rotating and I have these wrists connected to my body rotation yeah that's when I feel I'm getting my best compression okay and, and my best action on the ball through impact is when they're synced up to my body when I don't play for a while if my legs are tired mm -hmm. my, my middle part doesn't work as well and then the arms start outracing my body, that's when I start throwing the head through the bottom and just like missing it okay. Okay. Right? All right, so Eric has the hack motion device on now. So we're gonna, uh, let's have you hit some shots, Eric, and we'll just talk about kind of the graph. This is something that I really like to okay. work on. So I'll, just, I'll just hit a couple small ones. Yeah, that was good. All right, got that. And okay, Eric. So when we're over here, we can see that at the top, at the address, you're like 30 degrees cupped, you right. know, because you're strong grip. Right. And then you flatten it all the way to the top, a lot. So like you said, like at the top, you're you're pretty much like this. Mm -hmm. You know, you've you've taken 23 degrees off of that. And then from there to the ball, it's pretty stable. And then you actually add on that little pitchy one, you actually added a little bit more flex to right. it all the way to right before impact. You were uh, totally flat, like just so plus three. Plus three at impact. Yeah, yeah. so this would be zero would be that, and actually zero would be that. So you, you were just on the plus side. On the good so side. So this is minus. This is and minus. And this is plus. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So you took it all the way from 33 to three. So you took 30 degrees off of it right. on the way there. A lot of uh, bad players, they, they start whatever they are at and they, they've added, yeah. you know, so they're on the that big side of plus. Yep. So let's keep, let's keep going a little larger. Okay. And I think we'll start to kind of see your pattern emerge more and more. Okay. So that had some more elevation. So we should see. Yeah. So similar this one was a really good one so 36 at at address so it's 36 this way All right you only flatten it a little bit this is your takeaway from here to here okay and then as you go to the top then once you've made your your initial takeaway it seems very quiet mm -hmm. then you really start to to close it down and then you keep it there and then right about here you're starting to let it out a yeah. little bit you know so yeah. it's kind of unloading and uh, it goes into the ball but the main thing we can see then is then at total impact zero right so if we if we had you face on so let me move the camera face on for the next one and go a little closer to full here for us that's been my tendency over the years with my shut face is throwing loft into shots oh okay and so i'd, I'd have a square club face but I'd, I'd throw some loft into it so i'd hit it straight but not always compressing it the way it needs to be compressed to have total control of my golf ball at a higher level. I got you. Right? Got you. This is a good shot? Yeah. Good. These are my clubs Eric's hitting as well. Uh, all right, so this one was real stable. You're super consistent. You're always at about 30 at, um, at address. And that's something that when I've wor like had other people use the hack motion when I use it, like. Uh, I'm all over the place at address. Mm -hmm. Where the better players, it's like the same all the time, especially right. at address. Okay, so then it's it's right here's the takeaway, so it stays pretty flat. You've only taken four four degrees off, which is basically nothing. Yeah. Uh, and then you start to flatten it, and then right here, as the clubs then like your hands are really ascending, then then you're flattening the wrist a lot. And then that one, I think, because of what we just talked about you really held the loft a little bit more. It, there wasn't this it didn't throw rising. As much. No, 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 not, yeah. not as much. So from there, we, we saw it go down. Yeah, I like that a lot. That was simple looking. So simple. And these are like, so I got your nine iron. These are probably maybe 130 yard nine iron. So they're not- Oh, okay, crushed or anything, full. yeah. Same thing here, 30 to 29 degrees at the top. This one, you went, uh, you tucked it under a little bit more. 
just a little bit. Okay. This thing's not perfect either, but it, it is pretty darn close. Yeah. And then at the top, you were zero. So you, you took all the loft out, but you had a flat wrist at the top. And then you made a, a peaceful transition. And then right before, so that, that would represent right about like here, then you're letting it all out. Right. Which from the end all the way through, which is, which is what they say. The, 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 the best players usually have this S curve where it goes straight across to the top, it goes down, and then near the end it goes up. And I think as we see you get more and more speed, we're going to see this little ramp happen more. Right. So on those 50 yard pitches, you'd probably see it pretty simple and yep. flat, flattening. And then as you get more speed, uh, hit one hard. I just want to see what that would look like on here. Your hard still looks so peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, all right, so this is really good. Again, you just, every single time, like that's 29 degrees for the right. third time in a row at a dress. At a dress. Which, uh, I mean, just to practice that alone, I think it would be huge for people to have the same. That's the one thing we have full control over is how we set up. At, at a dress. 100%. Yeah. 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 So then it starts uh, going down in the takeaway, and then it really starts going down as you finish your, your backswing. Okay, so then, yeah, it gets really flat, and then same thing, you're right at zero at the top, so you've taken exactly 29 degrees off of it here. And then you were really peaceful in the, f in the transition, mm -hmm. and you know, like your wrist angle stayed very quiet. Right. Probably because you were really on plane really good. And then right there, which is about here, to the finish, then it was all let out. Starts releasing. Yeah, yep. starts to start. So that's really good. Yeah. How do we build that? Like if you have a player that is going like this through the ball, which is how, how many, how many, how percentage wise? How many oh, a lot. Yeah. A lot. Because what it takes to get the club on plane takes probably several years of construction on how the parts work and then getting it synced up and getting the body to lead, the big muscles to lead so we can pull these angles through with this hip and then the rotation. Um, I mean, I, they all, I, I haven't seen very many students come to me with good conditions. Just naturally, Especially natural kids. Because okay. kids don't have the speed to maintain the integrity of that wrist. Mm -hmm. So they start throwing loft into it because they're not that fast. So they're not, they don't have, they can't have these wrist conditions at a young age. Okay. Because they don't have the speed. Otherwise they're just hitting it, you know, super low with every club. So they, they come down, they generally have a pretty strong grip, grip and they'll come down and they start throwing the club head through, adding loft to it to get the ball up in the air. So with one of my younger students, she's 13, we've looked at her wrist conditions, we've been together two and a half years, and she'll throw loft into it and I tell her, look, we're just gonna hold off on these wrist conditions until you get bigger and stronger. And now we're starting to move her grip around a little bit, get a little bit weaker so we can start compressing it because she now has the strength and speed to handle the, the, the correct or the better wrist conditions, compressing the ball and getting, because now she, she's hitting it high, but she's still throwing a little bit of loft into okay. it. So talk about the process of, especially for people at home, how they can start to, one, diagnose themselves, okay, how are my wrist conditions? And then two, start to build like, a pivot powered motion that keeps mm -hmm. the wrist conditions correct through it's understanding so so it would start with a player's grip is okay. it strong is it weak that'll determine a lot of how the wrist conditions work through impact okay so so we look at the grip and if it's a weak grip then you know the club face is going to rotate more than a stronger grip so we look at the grip and then after that it's it's educating that left wrist on having it work this way. So mm -hmm. when I can get familiar with what it feels like. Having it work which way, I'm just ha having it work, Having it bow, oh. right? So when I can get familiar with this wrist condition working like this, and this one working, the right one working this way, and then having them work through impact more like this, so I'm pushing with the trail hand, I'm pushing that wrist into the ground and turning it down. And again, it depends on a weak grip or a strong grip, how much we're gonna work this way versus this way. So it's getting, a, it's getting a student familiar with how we want that wrist to work. So it's constantly, and I had a student, uh, he's a freshman at Long Beach State now, his wrist conditions are ridiculous at impact. He's got a very weak grip, but he's like this. So when we would work, we've been together about four years, he would always have his wrist bowed. At just, impact. just no, just standing here talking. Oh yeah, yeah. He would just have this bowed, and so if he's holding a club, he'd always hold it like this. 
just standing having dialogue back and forth he's always he's always like this turning turning that wrist this way so he's educating that particular component on how we want it to work and then the right wrist will work bent this way so i'm always keeping this one bent so so it's educating a student on what those components do what's mm -hmm. what's their responsibility so does he have a weakish grip then he's got a very weak grip yeah okay so that yeah. that's a good matchup then yeah it's a good yeah. matchup yeah so so his grip at at a dress he's got the back of his left hand almost at like 11 o'clock uh -huh. right or, or for me a stronger grip i'm out here probably at two o'clock right right so so it's getting the understanding of how your wrist conditions work with your grip and then we get you on a path that can support those conditions throughout the golf swing especially from top to impact well i know one of the things that you like to do the most for this is hit like little shots to start yeah so kind of show us how that would work so so laying the foundation of how we want the parts to work and and we look at the beginning of the swing getting it assembled on plane okay so so i'm looking for and we've talked about it that horizontal spot with parallel to my toe line or target line yeah that was on instagram though so so, yeah. so tell us about that so so getting and and mine will be under and shut and we see that in the hack motion and then i get up here late so the way i i teach is i, I want these wrists to hinge a little sooner than i hinge mine mm -hmm. so we get this club assembled horizontal with the ground parallel with our toe line with a fairly flat left wrist. Yeah. And then it comes up and then it's the transition of allowing this to, the, the arms to fall down as I'm just, just gliding over into my left side. And then I start to rotate and release the hands. So the small shots will go getting to here, getting to there. So, so I'm feeling my wrist conditions being attached to my body rotation. Yeah, it was always really solid. And then, yeah, that there you can see from top through impact it's all so straight mm -hmm. you know it's all so together right so what we're looking for is is the plane mm -hmm. and then the sequencing and the sequencing if there was we know that that low point is especially on a, a a shorter club is three or four inches ahead of the ball so if i had a finish line that was say four inches ahead of the ball when i'm coming down the plane the, the order through impact is going to be my hip is first, my whole left side is second, my left arm is third, my hands are fourth, the club is fifth, and then my right side is sixth, just probably a smaller percentage of my trail side finishing it off. Okay. So that order is leading these wrist conditions into and through impact. If it's not in that order, then I'm probably going to throw that head past my hands through impact, taking that wrist condition and, and losing, my, losing my compression. That's why it's so hard to do because if any of that is out of order, then the, it, it shows up in the wrist. That, that, yeah, because the energy in this head is gonna start passing, yeah. right, if we're not in order. So we spend a lot of time, and the way, the way that, and I haven't heard this, but the way that I think the wrist conditions work is that this one hinges, yeah the left so when it's coming down the plane this one's coming down and if i just move into my left side and when this hip starts to rise up yeah as i'm posting up centrifugal force takes the energy in this head and starts to spin this wrist mm -hmm. when i start working up this right wrist is bent and it's in here and if i just take this hip and i rotate and these hands and arms start getting out in front of me centrifugal force takes the head and spins this wrist so yeah. when I have my wrist conditions attached to my body rotation, when my hands are coming down the plane and I get to about this point and I start pushing off the ground using it for power, this hip goes up and in, assisting in this wrist going down yeah. and the right wrist going out and helping me release the club. Not fully, but assisting in the release pattern. So in the same way, if somebody transitions and this goes up in the air straight away, then this goes out. Right I have away. a student, we've been yeah. working for over a year now on, on her posting up and uh -huh. she posts up really early. So when she posts up, we see this wrist spend and now she's already here because she's pushed this leg is straight too soon, mm -hmm. which when this goes up, this goes down and she's like this. So impact is here 
and she just kind of dredges the bottom this way and she hits it straight but there's no power right right mm -hmm. so getting getting it synced up with when we post up is when the, when the the risk conditions release mm -hmm. and they're led into and through impact by the proper sequencing okay. Show me um, some of the drills I know you like for this, other than, than this, this small 50-yard shot. You like a lot of freezers in different locations and stuff to help people, kind of pause drills. Yeah, the pause drills, because that, that isolates the transition on what we want it to feel like. It's harder than heck to hit quality shots by stopping. <laughs> yeah. But it's getting the... But if you can learn to do it, it's important. If you can learn to do it, yeah, it's, okay. it's good. Can you're, you show us? You're owning. So... So I'll have students go up, go up very slow, so so they they know exactly what it feels like to get their assembly up the plane. Yeah. Right. So it's going it's going very slow, and stop. Oh yeah. Right. So it's we I had a student call it the stiff and nasty, okay. Because that's what it feels like. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But 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 we're not after we're not after quality shots. We're after what does it feel like to get on plane stop and change directions this way not the way a student would be whatever way there is whether they're dumping it down here or coming over the top or whatever mm -hmm. right right so so it's just isolating that one component on how we want it to work right, right? so wow oh capture that one this will be interesting to see with that big that pause was a little that one was a little throwy Yep, you can feel it. Yeah, just at, just only at the very end though. Yeah, it just made the ball go higher. So we we start laying the foundation of how we want the parts to work. Yeah. In just little shots, okay. a lot of little pitches, uh -huh. and I spent years doing just because I had to I had to work on my plane because I was under and shut. Right. And I would hinge late, and then I would come over the top a little so bit. So the little shots would help you be like, okay, if I'm on plane here at like two they call it so it's, uh, and then just hit it from there yeah so it's yeah. like if, if we can lay a foundation of how we want it to work at like 25 or 30 percent yeah it's like okay brennan you get it mm -hmm. Th this is it right we take video and we go look this is this is how we want it to work then we then we start pushing the pace a little bit and get it to 40 or 50 percent yeah. and if you start to wreck it up there we bring it back down to where you're su successful keep laying that foundation of, of where we want it to work okay and then we keep bumping it up and we want to get you to 100 percent as fast as we can sure and then we bring it back down and find your optimal place to play from but we own it from 30 to 100 percent so now i have with a nine iron, I have anywhere from say 100 yards to 170 yards is my range with nine iron. Okay. And I can stop it anywhere on the plane and change directions and hit a 100 yard nine iron. And you're doing that through just a very intricate, almost clock system. It, yeah. Like, true. like you feel like if armpit will t will hit it 120, neck will hit it 130, kind of yeah, like that, and or no? Yeah. B building it, we could refer to it as that, but as we get away from it's like I can just look at a shot. I was hitting balls yesterday and I had that tree, which is maybe 110 yards. I had the blue, which was where I was yesterday, 130. Yeah. And then I had that one over there was like 160. So I was hitting nine iron, just going there, going there, going there. You know, just stopping oh, yeah, and changing yeah. directions, hitting and, and feeling like it's the same sequencing through each shot, mm -hmm. right? Same compression value through each shot. Yeah. Same flight. You know, so it's just building the foundation of how we want it to work. Yeah. And then and then spending the rest of our life getting it synced up, you know, from from each for, from any level. All right. All right, guys, you guys can learn more about Eric. I think the best way to connect with him is on Instagram, which is Easy Golf 60. Easy E. Easy E Golf 60. You'll have it up there. So, uh, yeah, we'll put it into the description of this video. We're also going to be doing some Cool stuff with Eric and Be Better Golf. We, I think we're going to do this thing called like a Be Better Golf Day with Eric. I think that'll be really exciting where we'll um, do like a half day golf school here and then, we'll, and then we'll have lunch and then go play Journey, I think is the idea. I think that's a good plan. Yeah, it sounds yeah. fun. Yeah. All right. Uh, so to connect with all that stuff, just be sure to be checking out BeBetterGolf.net slash school. I'll also be putting stuff up on uh, here on YouTube. Uh, click the subscribe button. Very important as well. It helps uh, keep the channel going. Thanks for watching. Bye.